Okay, a video for lab five. Now we want to connect a variable voltage to an analog to digital converter input of our 80 mega 8 So first let's have a look at the pin out. Uh, we are interested in the ADC zero pin here, which is channel zero of the analog to digital converter and it's located on the PC0 pin. So when we are using the ADC, we cannot use this as a digital port pin as we have done in lab three. Um, it's then only the ADC function. In Arduino, this corresponds actually to the pin A0. And yeah, that's exactly the zeroth analog input. The rest of the connections will be exactly the same as in the previous lab's first part, which means we have the seven segment display again connected um, to the pins of port D through the resistors and then the four PB0, PB1, PB2 and PB3 pins over there. But now we want to put a variable voltage between 0 and 5 volts to the pin which is next to this ground pin here. This is pin number 23 on the package. It's the ADC0 pin. You have a slightly different potentiometer in your boxes but it has the same value. It's a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and the way it works is that you have a wiper which goes on a resistive track and if we apply 0 volts to one side and 5 volts to the other side we can with the middle pin here um, connect to any voltage between these two extremes 0 volts on one side and one or 5 volts on the other side. Be extremely careful when you connect this now to the microcontroller in order not to short circuit the supply voltage and not to run um, the supply voltage into any wrong pin as might happen. So let me first, and, and you, you see the spacing of our potentiometer pins is one apart on the breadboard. So the potentiometer pins are five millimeters apart. The rows on the breadboard are 2.54 millimeters apart. That's a, yeah, a factor of two in between. So I connect a yellow wire here, which will be our sense wire, our input, and connect it to any column on the breadboard here. Then I connect plus five volts to a column which is two apart to the right and zero volts to a column which is two part apart from on the left. Looks like this now, Belgian flag. And then I'll insert the potentiometer correctly into the breadboard and here it sits. In order to read values from the potentiometer, we now have to have the correct code. And for this, we'll have a look into the register description of the analog to digital converter in the current version of the data sheet. It's chapter 24. Uh, 24.9 gives us the registers. And here we see that we have one register which is called ADMUX, the ADC multiplexer selection register. And we have another register which is called ADC SRA the ADC control and status register A. Um, you might ask, is there an ADC SRB? Um, there is, but we will not need it for today. It actually um, allows interesting things to do with the ADC, for example, to uh, measure signals timed on what happens on, on the timer. So you could actually start a new ADC measurement on overflows or compare matches of timer counter one or timer counter zero. Um, we, we don't want to do this. We start our own measurements and run them automatically one after another. So we have to find out what 
bits we want to set in at max, but let's look first and, and prepare the code for this. So the code itself, uh, we start again with defining, well, we start again with telling the compiler that we have a one megahertz uh, 80 mega in our system. We Im import the io.h as usual, also delay.h and interrupt.h because we want to run the display with our newly learned from lab four interrupt service handling so that we can we don't have to bother about the display in the main code. We then have the font definition for our display. As before, we have a frame buffer array, which uh, tells later on the system what to show on the first, second, third and fourth digit of the display. So index 0, 1, 2 and 3. And we have the global variable here, current digit, which tells the interrupt service routine which the current digit is. We will have a look later what we could do in, in, in order to avoid this global variable here. We can actually have it as a local variable in our interrupt service routine as well. The init, um, as usual, lower B pins as output and all D pins as output. Nothing new here. I start by initializing the four elements in the frame buffer with 0xff. Since our display has the cathodes as the segments, so the negatives on the segments, all ones on port D will actually show nothing on the display. It will be all off. We have the timer install, uh, initialization and the timer interrupt initialization exactly the same way as we had in lab four. So now we want to also uh, initialize the ADC, but let's do something first about our spaghetti code, which we ended off showing a number on the display. So. I have here left from before our value 9999 uh, uint 16 variable and I want to put it onto our display with just a single um, row in code. So I want to actually have a function in main which takes up all the necessary measures to put something onto the display. Um, so it doesn't have the function doesn't have to return anything. I call it update, but it has to take in a number. So I give it a uint 16 variable and I call it value. So this should be the number then which we want to dis to display on the LED matrix or the segment segment array here. So how do we do it? It was this mod and diff uh, iteration. So this time I actually want to optimize it and put it in a loop. So let me define a local variable here, which takes our value because we have to divide it down uh, later on. We could actually do it with our argument here as well. Wouldn't hurt, um, but this might be more clear and less convoluted. And I want to do it in a loop instead of spaghetti code. So I give me a loop variable here as well, an 8-bit variable i. How many digits do we have on the display? We have four digits. So I start with i as 0. Um, go while it's still less than 4 through the loop. And each time we iterate, we increment it by one. And what do we need to do now? Well, now we want to take the remainder of the division by 10. Look up the font for this number 
and put it into the frame buffer. Okay, so our frame buffer Which digit do we want to update first or set first? Well, we have to start from the ones before we go to the tens, hundreds, and thousands. So we choose here the digit three minus i. So we start with i equals zero. So this is the index three position, um, which is the last one here to the right. What do we do then? Well, the, we assign it to the font of our variable a reminder by the uh, division by 10, so the mod operator 10. But we also have to invert our bit pattern because we have the segments as the cathodes, so we have to put the tilde operator in front of our number. Now we can divide a by 10 and repeat the iteration four times and that should give us our value on the display. Let's test this. We do and we call the new update function here with value as its argument and we say value minus minus after each step and uh, then actually we put in a delay let's say 10 milliseconds should be enough the, the last digit will run quite fast in this case but we will see something happening on the pre, on the higher digits anyway so let's see if this code compiles and what would happen if i now upload this code to our microcontroller i flash it over and let's see what the microcontroller does here Switching off the light, um, yeah, you can see it's counting down. 8,800, 8,700, 8,600, 8,500. So this code works and puts now any given number onto the display by just yeah, three rows of comment and two rows of code. So with this out of the way, now we ha we will look into the initialization of the timer. And I will do it before enabling the global interrupts so that everything is ready once the first interrupt happens. So going back to our data sheet, we said that we have the admux register to take care of. So we say admux equals. So what do we have in AdMox? We have the bits called refs1 and refs0. We have the bit adlar and four bits called max3 down to max0. Um, so let us first do a skeleton here by actually saying mm, zero shifted refs1 positions to the left or a zero shifted refs zero positions to the left or a zero shifted atlar positions to the left or a zero shifted max three positions to the left max zero positions, max two positions. Okay, 
Let's, let's keep them in order. Max 1 positions and max 2 positions to the left. We will fill these in a second. The other register which we have in the ADC is the ADC SRA, the Control and Status Register A. So ADC SRA equals, we have a bit called ADEN, ADSC, ADATI. So we make the same thing here, zero. ADN, which stands for AD enable, uh, zero, which is in position ADSC, which stands for start conversion, which is a very important bit, as we will see later. Then we have the ADATE, ADIF, ADIE. Adif tells us if an interrupt is currently um, produced by the ADC and RDEE tells the system to enable the interrupt from the analog to digital converter. We will not do this now. We will keep only the timer interrupt. And then we have three more bits which are called ADPS2 PS1 and PS0. So 0 AD PS2 PS PS2 PS1 and PS0. So now start, we, we start and look up what we want to have in these, because currently now they are all set to zero. Let me um, adjust the indentation here. So it looks a bit nicer so that they line up. Well, they don't line up there. They're okay, it's good enough. So REFS one and zero obviously belong together. What could these bit mean? Uh, so actually it is the voltage reference selection for our ADC. So we have different options here. Actually of the four possible options, three are listed here and one is listed as reserved, which we shouldn't use. But we want to start with actually using the external five volt, or our five volt reference as actual um, the reference value for our analog to digital conversion. So we should put a zero into refs one and a one into refs zero. So a zero into refs one and a one into refs zero. Adla is quite interesting to look at. Uh, it can shift our result of our ADC conversion to the left or to the right. What does this mean? Our analog to digital converter is a 10-bit converter, but we have a 16-bit register which contains the result. So actually it's two 8-bit registers for the result. And this would be the ADC high and ADC low register containing the high byte and the low byte of a 16-bit number. But as I said, our ADC produces a 10-bit number. So we could actually have the 10 bits arranged like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 bits like this, zero to nine. 
this is 0 to 7 and this is bit 0 to 7 here. So this would be right adjusted. But we could also left adjust our 10 bits and then our result would end up like this with bit 0 here and bit 9 here in the result register. We want to have it in, in the standard form, so we want to have it right adjusted and not left adjusted, which actually means that we go for the ATLA left, result, uh, left shift result uh, as a zero. So ADLA stays as a zero. And then we have the MUX, M-U-X, which stands for multiplex. And our analog to digital converter actually has 16 possible values for these four bits, which select different pins on the package as the analog input or actually two internal uh, values as well. So we can actually measure a 1.1 volt reference voltage internally, we can measure zero volts, or we can measure the value at ADC0 to ADC8. If we look back at our microcontroller here, we see that we have ADC0 to ADC5 on the outside of our package. There is another package of the ATmega328, which actually has the additional pins selected here, apart from the ADC8. So, so there's a package with two more, with actually several more legs, um, where actually AD6 and ADC7 are also available on the outside of this package. There's actually a star mark or a footnote here, temperature sensor, so there's an internal temperature sensor connected to ADC8 channel here, which we will not use either. We have connected our wire to ADC0 here. So in order for that to work, we have to select max 3 to max 0 as 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, well, that's already there in my template. Now we have to look into the ADCSR register. ADCSRR register um, comes here in the data sheet and here we have the bits which we described earlier or put into the code earlier. ADC enable. Obviously we want to enable our uh, ADC. So by writing a zero to this, the ADC is turned off. So what do we want to write here? A one, of course. So Aiden should be one. ADSC, start conversion. Um, and it says here that if it's written at the same time as the ADC is enabled, it will take 25 analog to digital clock cycles instead of the normal 13. This first conversion performs initialization of the ADC. Um, so a normal conversion takes 13 clock cycles and uh, the first one will take 25 clock cycles. We or you can also read in the data sheet that the first value ever returned from it is probably not really, really reliable. Um, so we, we just activate it here and then later, yeah, we, we get the first value, but we, we ignore it. Um, but we will see it. It's one value which might be off. Um, so we enable the analog to digital converter. We start our first conversion. Now, what are the next bits? Adate. Um, it is an auto trigger enable. We ignore this. So if written to one, blah, yeah, we leave it at zero. Um, ADC interrupt flag tells us whether there is an interrupt ongoing. We ignore this and ADEIE actually would enable interrupts. We will leave this as zero. Now comes the ADC prescaler. So ADPS2, one and zero down here. And these tell the system at which clock frequency our analog to digital converter should run. So it starts actually by the CPU clock and divides it down as for our timer, the prescaler uh, factor. 
Uh, so we can choose uh, the CPU, CPU clock by 2, by 4, by 8, 16, 32, 64 and 128. We have a 1 MHz clock frequency, so this would be 500 kHz, 250 kHz, 125 kHz, 62 kHz, 30 something kHz, 15 kHz and roughly 7 or 8 kHz down here. It says further up in the datasheet that we should preferably be between 100 kHz and 200 kHz. So the division by 8 here with gives us, which gives us 125 kHz, it's a good choice. So we have 0, 1, 1 to put into our prescaler. 0, 1, 1. And now our ADC is initialized and running. So now we have to make sure that we actually get the values from it. And uh, we get the values actually by reading the variable ADC. It's a 16-bit variable um, which contains the result of our analog to digital conversion. So if we write this result into our value variable and then don't decrease it anymore, we will actually output the value of the analog to digital conversion onto the screen. But if we want to do it repeatedly, we also have to start a new conversion again. So how can we do this? The conversion started by actually putting a 1 into the ADSC bit of the AD. C S R A register A D C S R A on one side and a one shifted start conversion A D C S C on the other side. We don't want to change any of the other bits. So how can we do that? Well, we say that we first take the current value of the register. And then with an OR operator, we make sure that we set the ADSC bit. But we did so up here, didn't we? And there's one interesting thing with this ADSC bit, which we can see in the data sheet again. And this is that actually that the ADSC will read as one, as a logical one, as long as a conversion is in progress. When the conversion is complete, it returns to zero. So while it is in the conversion mode, uh, this bit is set. Once the conversion is finished, it will be zero. And then we actually can get our result back. So what can we do? Well, we could actually wait until this is the case. So if we put a while loop here, while ADCSRA, has this bit still set as a 1. How can we do this? We can do this with the AND operator. So while this bit is still set as 1, we want to do nothing. We are still waiting. How does this work in detail? Let's have a look again at the paper. So we have the register ADCSRA. And we are interested in this bit up here. So this is the ADSC bit. And by using the AND operator and the binary number 01000000, none of the other bits has a chance to get through into our result. Our result will always be a zero at the positions where the constant operate, operand after the AND operator is a zero. But here, where we have an 
1. If ADSC is a 1 and we have a 1 here, then our result here will be a 1. If ADSC is a 0 and 1, we still get a 0. So we get a binary number, an 8-bit binary number, where only the state of the ADSC bit is kept. All the other bits are set to 0. Which means if this bit is 0, then the whole result here will be 0, which actually would bring us out of our loop here, because the value of 0 is regarded as false. So what happens if we compile this code and upload it into our microcontroller now. It might be that there is a bug in the code still. I'm not completely sure that this is not the case. Uh, this, this was wrong. I have to first compile it, of course. Um, no, it compiled successfully. Um, so let's see if it also does what it is supposed to be doing. And this is what our display shows. 482, sometimes jumping over to a 483. Um, and if I now rotate the potentiometer towards 0 volts, we see that we actually get a 0 on the display there. If I rotate it to the right side here, to the maximum, then actually we get a value of 1023, which is the highest number which fits into 10 bits. So this means that we have the highest result possible from our ADC conversion. And at 511, 512, somewhere we should be in the middle between uh, our two voltages, 0 volts and uh, 5 volts on the other side. Yeah, so somewhere here. And uh, so, yeah, this is, we, we can read now the value of our potentiometer from the ADC.